Hey, Kaposi Gloves here, and today we're going to be jumping into seventh chords. These are chords with four notes. So before we're doing with triads, um, I, there's actually names for when we have different notes. I've been calling two notes just a harmony, but it's really fancy name is a dyad. And you just add this sort of rad at the end to whatever the, pref the prefix will be like the number. So die meaning two, and then add meaning a chord. I'm not really sure what the add part is. But then we have a triad, and then we have a tetrad and that's four for tet meaning four and rad because music is rad right like math math is radical music is just rad so let's go ahead and look at these so these are things that seventh chords are sort of really cool topics but they're a little more advanced and people always introduce them at the beginning save a very few music courses because you need them for analysis you're going to see them in music and you're not going to know what they are and so you have to be able to analyze these things and not flip out when you see them you're going to see stuff you don't know about inevitably when you're starting out but this will cover a very large base of what you're going to see I'm going to have you start composing with these pretty fast. It's, the problem is that people just show you how to build them and they breeze right through them and they're almost meaningless in the way they teach them. They're just like, these are the formulas, make the formulas, know what the chord is, now analyze. Like That's like how the exercises feel. It's very robotic in my opinion. So we're going to be working with these because these are really cool textures. Like when you get to start composing with these, these are like where you can start going, oh man, this is pretty cool. They'll show you, they'll usually show you a couple elementary ways to use them. We're going to be covering those ways, but they put it off like so far in, later. It's like, why did I even learn about seventh chords here? But it's for the analysis reason. That's why. So we're going to go over each one individually because we're not constrained by some academic schedule we have to stick to rigorously. So we have time to go ahead and really get familiar and make this information more meaningful and useful immediately. So there are a bunch of different kinds of seventh chords. If you were to do all the combos of four notes that you could have, it would be large. You could do the math, I guess, if you want. But we only really care about five. They're the most commonly used, and the most most commonly used are probably these top three. And then these these others will pop up uh, here and there. And then the, the crazier music you get, the more they pop up. But in tonal harmony, um, yeah, they, they each play a specific role. They each do a different thing. They each have their own sound. So we're going to go ahead and start building these. Now, we're only building a root position still. So we have... so. I'm going to do all these things in C major. So over here, I have the five ones we're concerned with. And so this is just an introduction to seventh chord. So we have a major seven, um, a major minor dominant, or just a seven chord. Minor seven, half diminished seven, full diminished. And we have the formulas over here, how to build each one. So we say, oh, okay, this is like, this is how I build it. All right. So we got to remember that when we're building chords or writing music, we are working in a key. So there are specific ways the notes need to look when they appear. That way we don't get things inharmonically incorrect. And we'll see an example of that uh, as we work right now. So I built a C major scale through extreme effort right here. So we have our C major scale just as a reference scale while we're learning these things. And we say, okay, our first one is a major seven. And so the way you build a major seven chord is you build a major triad with a major seventh on top. So we say, okay, here, let's build a major triad. So we'll put C, E, G. And at this point, here's the warning. You should be very comfortable with building augmented, diminished, minor, and major triads. If you're not, you need to go back, redo the exercises, maybe pick different chords. Just select the whole exercise and shift it up two notes and then do it again. Like something, get faster with triads. You have to, because uh, you will you'll just get bogged down and you'll get overwhelmed too if you're spending all your time building simple triads. So, okay, we've got our triad built. So we've got major triad, check. Now we need to make a major seven. So a major seven means it's found in the major scale. So we go, oh, we look at this and we say, oh, the seven is the B. So we put down the B. That, my friends, is a B, I mean a C major seven. And if we were to do the chord symbol for this, it would look like this, C major 7. And that's what it would look like. 
Uh, so the reason we we actually, if you wanted to be a major seven, it must always have a mage in front of it. You you would think it'd be C seven. C seven is actually reserved for the for the second one because this one is just way more common and it plays a couple roles that are very valuable to us as music theorists. But the C major seven has a wonderful sound. Here's a C major seven. Here's a G major seven. Here's a F major seven. Those are all in root position. So, okay, that is the major seven sound. And again, we're gonna be looking at these individually and introducing them. And then the chord building exercises are gonna to start to get a bit more intense because we're gonna have, you know, we'll start slow, but soon we're gonna have just everything will be in there and it'll be great. So, okay, now we're gonna build the next one now. This is somewhat hilarious, I think. So the really fancy name, I guess, you would call is the Major Minor 7. That's what this thing is going to be called. But no one calls it that. That's what it is. Like, if you look at the formula, it's a major triad with a minor 7th. But everyone calls it the either the dominant 7 or just the 7. It's so common, people just say, oh, it's C7. What, what I think is hilarious is that the book that I was using when I was learning did not ever mention this until like way later. It kept it like this. It said major minor seven chord. I'm like way to just completely, like no one talks about it like this. Thanks for that. So yeah, it's just really interesting. So everyone will call it just the seven. So if someone says play a C7 chord, they're, they're saying to you play a dominant seven chord. They're not saying play a major seven chord. That's a different deal. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead. Let's build one of these. So this is a major triad. So we build a major triad. But it's a minor seventh, so it still has to be seven, so it's still got to be B. But now it's been lowered a half step. Now it is a minor seventh. It sounds like this. And so if you were to like, that's a minor seven. Here's a uh, another one. And the reason these are so valuable to us. Oh, whoops, that's a <laughs> that's a minor seven. Let me play for you a dominant seven. That's a dominant seven. Here's a dominant seven again. The reason these are so useful is they allow us to shift keys very easily. They are used all the time with the five chord in a scale. So if we were to go to C major and we go to G, if we were to add its dominant seven, it would wind up being the four. Okay, I think I'm overwhelming people at this point. But anyways, check it out. If we play some notes and we'll talk about this stuff in more detail later. And now we go to the dominant seven of the five chord in C major, which is G dom seven or just G seven. That's super nice. So uh, they're also used to shift to different keys. So we like if we play to C dominant seven, just arbitrarily, well, there's ways of introducing it. But that pulls to the F major chord. I'm just staying in root position right now. I may occasionally play an inversion by accident. I'm just really used to thinking of inversions. So we say, all right, that's that. Now, we're, if uh, we're just getting a feel for how these things work. Now, the next one is, oh, let's write the chord symbol for this. Control K. So this one is just a C7. And you're done. C7. All right. So the next one is a C minor trad with a, so C minor seven is a minor chord. And we lower it a half step with a minor seventh. So if we put our minor seventh back up there, that B flat, we've already figured that out. So now I've got a C minor seven. You need that little M to tell people that it's minor, lowercase m. And that's what's going on there. Sometimes people will omit the mage and put a capital M, though it's, uh, it's kind of frowned upon because it's ambiguous if you're handwriting it. Because some people's M's do not look like regular M's. Like we had a rule that if you were going to use M and you weren't going to write minor, min, then you had to put a little line in order to pass the class. Otherwise, it was assumed to be major. So, yeah, it's just ambiguous. So you don't want to do that. But when you're typing stuff, you could totally use a lowercase M and a major M. Just talking about be careful when you're writing stuff down on paper. So this has a wonderful sound as well. Very awesome way to do it. So it's like the dominant seven, only it's now got a minor chord underneath it. And then this this stuff is great. This stuff totally throws people for a loop. So this is the half diminished seven chord. And it, it says the word diminished in it, so you better expect some diminished stuff. So this is a diminished triad 
with a minor seventh. And the way you build one of these is we build our diminished triad. So we build one, and remember we're moving in the tonal key of C. So C has to be our root note. So that these other notes, in order for them to be a diminished chord, must be a lowered half step. And then we need a minor seventh. We've already figured out what a minor seventh is. It's a B flat. That's what the C, now it's half diminished because uh, it's a minor seven. The minor seven's not diminished. We actually have a diminished seven. Now we haven't talked about this. We're about to. Uh, but this is a half diminished chord because it's only half diminished. So this is what it sounds like. Very wonderful sound. And if we put uh, at the at the moment, it might not. It depends on how like into jazz and stuff you are. Some people can start off with that and they think it's great. Other people go, oh, that's not great at all. And in tonal harmony, this is a very dissonant chord. It's used in circumstances where you, you sort of have to reach for it. Yeah, you're not going to use this as much. There's reasons why these are used less often in tonal harmony. All right, in the chord symbol for this, if we hit Control K, it's going to be. Now we're going to type in a C, and you don't need to write a seven here. Because if you ever write half diminished, there must be a seven. So th this happens a lot in figure bass too. If a certain symbol appears, you don't have to write other symbols you'd normally write because there must be a particular thing going on. So if there's a half diminished, there must be a seven. So we already know it's a diminished chord underneath. So it's a waste of typing. So you just put C O and it puts a whoops, that's a, we want a capital O. I mean a zero, we want a zero. You put a zero, it'll put this circle with a line through it. That is the symbol for half diminished. So if you ever see that, you know there's gotta be a diminished chord with a dim diminished seven on top. So it's just assumed, so you don't need to put a seven included with the nifty circle with a line through it. I'm not really actually sure why that is the symbol, but that's what we use. So now the diminished symbol is a ring. And I know it comes from the diminished symbol. I just, just and then it's half, so it's been cut in half. Why the ring from the diminished symbol, you know? Okay, so that's the half diminished. And then the full diminished is when you have a diminished chord with a diminished seventh. You might be going, well, I know what a minor seventh is. What's a diminished seventh? Well, we went from major to minor by lowering a half step. If we lower it again, it's a diminished interval. So it's just basically lowering the interval twice, going down a whole step. So we put down a diminished triad. And we adjust our notes. So we have our diminished triad. And then we build a diminished seventh by putting a diminished seventh on top. So we know it's got to be a B because now this is where people will put funky answers here. I might see A naturals hanging around and we don't want any A naturals. We want the correct interval as it relates to the tonal center of our key. So we look at this, we say, okay, this is a, a B flat. Uh, I mean a B natural, right? That's our, our major interval. So we put a B and then if we lower it one half step, it's minor. If we lower it two, it's diminished. So we're going to make it a double flat interval. And we're going to label it. And so this is C7, because you can have a diminished chord that doesn't require a seventh. So we have to notate that there is a seven involved here. And then we put a lowercase o. And that makes it a C7, full diminished. So that's what that means. And if we play it... It's a awesome sound, right? So that's what's going on there. This is where people might do, they might lose points on a test for writing their correct, inharmonically correct note, but the wrong inharmonic. They, they put like an A natural instead of a B double flat. So these are the basic kinds of chords. We're going to be working with each one. Some of them will cover less because they're used less, but we will work with them. You will get to know them. A lot of times this stuff is just brushed over. Like literally people just mention this and then they like seem to never talk about it again. And then suddenly like five classes later, you're talking all about this stuff. And it's like, what the heck's going on here? Why didn't you mention this stuff way long ago? This doesn't seem that crazy. But then you can get into like modal mixture and a whole bunch of, of nifty stuff and ways of shifting through tonal centers and just all senses of madness. So you, you sort of have a lot more to go off of. So I, I suppose that's why they put it back. But we'll look at some of this stuff. We're going to be focusing on these three mostly. These are the ones you really want to be comfortable with. These are the ones that you just, it shows up on a test and you're just like, yeah, I can build that chord. Here you go. And there it is. If you have any questions about this stuff, let me know. Subscribe. Support me on Patreon. This will be included as a sheet 
and the I even control S right now. It'll be included in the workbook if you want it as a reference. You can build this with any other like chord. I encourage you to make a bunch of them. I'm going to be doing some chord building exercises and some composition exercises similar to what we have done. And yeah, subscribe and have a blessed day.